And the last part of graph theory is Hasse diagrams, which we already did when we talked about binary relations. But we can do a little review right now. So a Hasse diagram represents what kind of binary relation? It was a partially ordered set. Okay, so the last topic in, in graph theory is Hasse diagrams. And that goes with binary relations also, right? So what we do is we're just going to take a graph for a relation, which we already know how to make, and we're going to rearrange it so we don't have to have any arrows. It has no loops. And also transitive edges are removed. So no arrows, all edges going up. So we know which way the arrows go. No loops and no transitive edges. When I say no transitive edges, what does that mean? Four goes to three and three goes to four. One does not go to four. If I have one three and three four, then one four has to be in the relation, right? Because it's transitive, because it's a partially ordered set. But this one is not drawn in the Hasse diagram. So we don't draw it. <coughs> And why do we make graphs like this? Find mins and maxes. We can find minimal and maximal elements, but it also makes it a lot easier to tell what the relationships are. Because we know that the loops are there, and we know that the transitive edges are there. We just don't need to draw them. So it's a lot less complicated, and that's why we draw them like that. So like, you remember the um, partially ordered set for the power set of 1, 2, 3, and the inclusion? relation, that was the subset relation. If we had to draw the graph for that, it would be amazingly covered with lines, right? So the maximum point was the set containing 1, 2, 3. And then what goes on the next level below that? All the sets containing two elements. And then these were connected, right? Now on the next level goes the elements by themselves. The single sets. So the the sets with singletons. And then I connect the ones that are subsets of each other. Sorry, these on the bottom are subsets of the top ones, but it doesn't go the other way. And what goes on the bottom level? Empty set. The empty set. So I'd have a lot more lines in here, and this is already a lot, right? I'd have a lot more lines in here if I had to draw the reflexive points, because reflexive means that every single one of these nodes is a subset of itself, and I would have to draw a little arrow and a loop on every single one of them. And then transitive means I'd have to actually draw a line from the empty set to all the other ones. So in this graph, you can really see it's useful to make a Hasse diagram instead of drawing the entire graph. OK, so anytime you're given a relation, you can make a Hasse diagram out of it. You draw the graph, and then you reorient it so all the edges go up. You get rid of all the reflexive points, and you get rid of all the transitive edges. So if if I gave you a matrix that represented a binary relation, can you all make a Hasse diagram? Sure. Good. Because guess what? I will. How about now? So a partially ordered set has what properties? So if you had trouble with anti-symmetric, remember, if you had to draw the diagram, in a Hasse diagram, if I have to draw everything going up, that means that nothing on the higher levels can relate back down to the lower levels. That's all the anti-symmetric means. 
So if I have an arrow going one way, it can't go the other way in my graph. Okay, so that's what it means. If you look at a graph of a relation, arrows only go in one direction. I don't have to have arrows going between every pair, but they're only allowed to go one way. So if something's reflexive, let's say this is a four by four, then it has to have ones down the diagonal, right? Now I can put ones anywhere else I want to. I'm making one up, by the way, right now, except I can't put them across from each other and then I have to make sure it's transitive. So let's see, I'll draw a graph for this while I'm doing it. So I just put one to two, one goes to one, and one goes to four. Let's make I just made it symmetric, which isn't allowed, right? Okay. There we go. Now let's make two go to three. Uh, let's not, because then one has to go to three. Let's make two go to four. And that's good because it's transitive so far, right? Mm -hmm. So two is zero, one, zero, one. Zero, one, zero, one. Two goes to itself. Three goes to itself. And I can also make three go to four. And then it'll still be transitive. And let's leave four going nowhere. So the matrix is going to be 1101, 0101, 0011, and 0001. So this is a partially ordered set because I made it that way. It's reflexive, it's anti-symmetric, and it's transitive. Excuse me, uh, does that mean that the graph also include f number four goes it itself? Yes, I forgot to draw that one. Okay, and so this one isn't that complicated, but it's still going to be easier to understand if I draw it as a Hasse diagram. So let's do that. Isn't that a um, symmetric point there? From three to, to is it four? Three to four? Three to four? No, because I don't have four to three. Okay. So it's okay. So I, since it doesn't go both ways, since nothing goes both, way, both ways, I'm anti-symmetric. The only difference between anti-symmetric and asymmetric, if you look at a graph, is asymmetric wouldn't be allowed to have any of these loops. Because asymmetric means that if I can go somewhere, I can't go the other way, but I can actually go both ways on this little loop. That's why you have to take those out for asymmetric. Okay, so which, which one goes on top here? Like, what's one that I can't ever leave from? Four. Four. So four goes up on top, and three goes to it, and two goes to it, and one goes to it. So those are candidates for the next level, right? But one and two can't go on the same level, right, because one goes to two. But two and three can, right, because they don't relate to each other. You can't put things on the same level if they relate to each other. So since these don't, I can put them on this level. I have to put one on the lower level, and it goes to two. It doesn't go to three, right? Okay, so which ones are we done? Could you put three on the lower level? I can put it on the lowest level, it just can't connect it just doesn't connect anything else. So that's an alternative. You can put three also on the bottom. Okay, which ones are maximal? Four. Four, Four is maximal. Anything else? It is a maximum. Right. Four is a maximum because it's the only maximal point. Are there any minimal elements? It's one, 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 and three. One and three are minimal. Is there a minimum? No. No, because there's more than one minimal element. Good job. How about um, what are the... Upper bounds of one. Four. One, two, and four, right? Mm -hmm. 
that's everything I can get to from 1. Mm -hmm. And you're forgetting there's a little loop on 1, so I can get to 1 from 1. So upper bounds of 1 are 1, 2, and 4. So what are upper bounds of 3? 3 and 4. 3. That's a 3 there. So that's 3 and 4. So what are upper bounds for the set 1, 3? 1, 2, One, two, two 3, four. 4. No. Just, Just four, 4, right? Because that's the only overlap between the upper bounds of 1 and the upper bounds of 3. Okay. It's the intersection of those two sets. Why is that the intersection? Because. You said so? Upper bounds of any set of things is things that are upper bounds for everything in the set. Okay. That's why it's the intersection, because it has to be an upper bound for one and an upper bound for three. Alright. Okay, so since there's only one upper bound for one and three, that actually has to be the least upper bound also, right? So if I look at a set of upper bounds, so what is the least upper bound for one? It's one, right? So the least upper bound is the minimum, if you look at the Heisen diagram, just of the upper bounds. So if I was looking at 1, 2, and 4, I would pick the minimum out of that to be the least upper bound. If there's no minimum, there is no least upper bound. And that's the lowest level, not necessarily the minimum value. Right. The minimum number might not be the, the lowest thing, right? Right. So they, they're on different levels. It's the lowest thing that you want to go with, not the lowest number. Okay, and all the lower bound stuff is exactly the opposite. Since, yes? Since 4 goes to itself, it, does 4 have an upper bound of itself? 4 is its own upper bound. That's right. Every point is its own upper bound and anything that you can get to above it. But I can't go down because the arrows all go up, right? right. But I do go down when I look for lower bounds, right? But for upper bounds, I always go up. For lower bounds, I always go down. Or stay where I am because those little loops like stay there. Okay, that's it for graph theory.